at all, okay? You talking this dude that did some sick, twisted things to my little sis, okay? And you want to put me face to face with this dude, okay? This is Nelson Sanderson. Sanderson is a convicted child molester serving two life sentences at the Century Correctional Institute in Escambia, Florida. But his worst fear came true on August 17th when a fellow inmate ended his life. The exact details of his death and the identity of the inmate are yet to be revealed and authorities are investigating the matter. Sanderson's crimes were heinous. He had molested two young children under the age of 12. A warrant was issued for his arrest in July 2012, but he fled to Nicaragua to evade capture. He spent four years hiding in Central America, hoping that the authorities would forget about him. However, U.S. Marshals finally caught up with him in April 2016. He was arrested and deported back to Florida to face the charges against him. At his trial in October 2016, Sanderson's wife, Charlotte, revealed that her husband was terrified of dying behind bars. She stated that his age and health make him unlikely to survive more than six months in prison. Sanderson's death may have brought closure to his victims and their families. Still, the Florida Department of Corrections has admitted failing in its duty of care towards him. In a statement, they pledged to hold inmates accountable for their actions and to provide a safe and secure environment for all prisoners. In a statement, the Florida Department of Corrections says it, quote, is committed to providing for the safety and well-being of all inmates in custody. Inmates who cause harm to others are held accountable for their actions. This includes administrative sanctions, placement in restrictive housing, and criminal charges if applicable. This is done for the safety of staff and other inmates. The correctional institution has implemented plans to prevent such crimes, from protective custody to high-security prisons. They have also established the Sex Offenders Management Program in collaboration with the Federal Bureau of Prisons. The program involved a designated place for only sex offenders. It was designed to provide psychological help to sex offenders before they are integrated into society. It's a kind of rehab for sex offenders. Child molesters can request to be transferred to this treatment program to escape the wrath of fellow inmates. However, getting into the program from a regular prison isn't always easy. Nevertheless, the program and subsequent policies have reduced the institutional culture of brutalizing and killing child sex offenders in prison. On the other hand, being placed in protective custody or a high-security prison is not entirely safe. High-security prisons mean the inmates are psychopathic and deadly killers or convicts who have committed more dangerous crimes. The sex offender faces more dangerous inmates in this sort of facility. But who will take the law into their hands? And why does it seem like convicted child molesters are frequently and mysteriously killed in prison. Child molesters have less rep than ex-cops in prison. They're treated with scorn. Surviving in prison as a child molester is difficult. Even among criminals, children are no-go areas. Some convicts feel like they're redeeming themselves by dishing out what they believe is the proper punishment for sex offenders. A federal study conducted from 2007 to 2015 showed that male sex offenders make up less than 20% of prisoners, but account for about 30% of all homicides in prison. Sex offenders are prone to get slashed, stabbed, or killed in prison. However, the current policies and programs by the Federal Bureau of Prisons have helped reduce violence against them. So, while Sanderson's murder is still being investigated and the killers are unknown or hiding, another prison had its inmate admit to a double murder. This is Jonathan Watson. Watson is serving a life sentence in Corcoran State Prison, California, for a 2009 murder conviction. He has violent tendencies, and it wasn't long before a violent outburst claimed the lives of two inmates accused of sexually assaulting children. In January 2020, the 41-year-old convict admitted to beating two fellow inmates to death with a cane. The victims were David Bob, 48, and Graham DeLuis Conti, 62 both of whom had been convicted of aggravated sexual assault against children and are serving life sentences. According to Watson's confession, which he made in a letter to a Northern California newspaper, he attacked the two men in retaliation for their behavior in the prison dormitory. Watson said that none of the men showed remorse, and one had been bragging about their heinous crimes and taunting him and other inmates by watching children's television programming 
an act that Watson found particularly objectionable. The day before the attack, Watson had reportedly warned a prison counselor that he was feeling increasingly violent and needed to be transferred to a higher security facility, but his pleas went unheeded and he was left to stew in anger. The following day, Watson took matters into his own hands. He picked up a cane and approached one of the men, beating him repeatedly over the head until he lay motionless on the ground. Watson then left the dormitory to find a guard and turn himself in. However, he encountered the second victim on the way, for whom he also used the cane until he was unresponsive. Watson said he believed he was doing everyone a favor by taking care of the child molesters. Watson's actions have been condemned by prison officials who say violence of any kind is unacceptable within their walls, but many people outside the prison walls have expressed sympathy for Watson, stating that he was pushed to his limits by the behavior of the men he attacked. Some argue that both child molesters got what they deserved. Regardless of how you feel about the murders, the fact remains that child molesters are an endangered species in prison. They are mostly considered the lowest of the low because their victims are innocent kids who should be protected, not abused. Watson's crimes made him popular, but it seemed his actions motivated another convict to take matters into his own hands and deal with another child molester, Robert Munger. This is Robert Munger. Munger is a Washington State prison inmate sentenced to 43 years imprisonment for child sex crimes. He was in prison with another convict, Goldsby, who he always teased and bragged about his crimes to. One would have thought that a child sex offender would be so ashamed to brag about traumatizing kids, but not Munger. Goldsby is in prison for stealing a police car and leading the police on a long chase before crashing into a cop, severely injuring the officer. Goldsby might have enjoyed a wild car chase, but found no joy in the gory details of child sex crimes. He snapped after Munger repeatedly teased him with details about the child sexual assaults, which later proved true. Goldsby admitted that the constant teasing and description of gory details made him unstable and the anger built up over time. Then, one day, Goldsby discovered that Munger, his 70-year-old cellmate, was the one that sexually assaulted his sister at all, okay? You talking this dude that did some sick, twisted things to my little sis, okay? And you want to put me face to face with this dude, okay? And that was the last nail in Munger's coffin. The court heard that Goldsby attacked Munger from behind in the prison's communal area and hit him in the face 14 times, then stomped on his head at least four times before walking away. He was promptly arrested. The 26-year-old was handed an additional 25-year sentence. Goldsby apologized to Munger's wife and his family. He noted that it's a little unkind for them to lose a family member in that manner. I'm ashamed of my actions to led to this man's death, you know? I was put into his mannequin dog. <laughs> Despite his apparent remorse, many people feel he was justified in dealing with his sister's abuser, just as another convict dealt with Caesar Pastrana. This is Caesar Pastrana. The 33-year-old was a convicted pedophile who was sentenced to life imprisonment for molesting several children in his home. How Pastrana ended up in prison is just as unsettling as his untimely demise. In 2012, he was arrested just days after volunteering at a weekend-long lock-in event sponsored by the North Star Church. It was there that Pastrana allegedly molested several boys, causing one of them to suffer a physical injury. During his trial, Pastrana pleaded guilty to sodomy and child molestation. The judge sentenced him to life in prison at Hancock State Prison. And there he stayed until March 16, 2020. The walls of Hancock State Prison in Sparta, Georgia are thick, but they couldn't keep the news from getting out. Caesar Pastrana, the convicted pedophile, lost his life in a fight with another inmate on a Friday. It had been eight long years since Pastrana had been sentenced to life in prison for child molestation. The details of his death are still under investigation. However, the Georgia Department of Corrections confirmed that Pastrana died from injuries sustained during a fight with another inmate. They're calling it a homicide, but have declined to reveal anything else. The department also refused to disclose how Pastrana lost his life or if the fight was related to his crimes. They're also not naming the man who allegedly killed the convicted pervert. Prison is dangerous, especially for those who have committed heinous crimes against children. 
Some say that Pastrana got what he deserved. Others might wonder if his death was justified, given that every life is valuable, even those of the most despicable among us. Regardless, his death gives credence to the fact that child molesters are not safe in prison.